to another episode of Half of the Bag, a movie review show. Uh, my name is Mike. And I'm Jay. And uh, today we're talking about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. That's right, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom stars Chris Pratt, Bryce Dallas Howard, Rhett Raff Spell, and uh, James Cromwell. Um, and it was written by Derek Connolly and Colin Trevorrow, directed by J.A. Bayona. I thought, you know, I, I thought it was okay in parts. Uh, you know, it's not as good as some of the other ones, but it had, uh, you know, a couple kind of uh, kind of fun action pieces. And uh, uh, but overall, I thought it was just all right. Okay, I really liked the first one, um, Jurassic Park. A Jurassic World, I thought was was really good. It was an exciting adventure film. Um, but this one, I think, may have stepped down a notch. Um, it had some good action sequences, um, but yeah, plenty of dino action. If you're if you're into into uh, uh, if you're into movies with dino action, there's there's plenty of that. The the graphics are good. I, I would say overall, if you uh, like Chris Pratt, yeah, I like Chris Pratt. You'll, you'll probably like this movie. I like I like him in most of the stuff he's done. Yeah, yeah, he's good. Uh, if you if you like this review and want to see more, smash that like button. And don't forget to subscribe and uh, ring the bell. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click that like button. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, Jay. It's almost 2 o'clock. We should start heading back. Oh, right. Come on. Boy, oh boy, it sure is good to be back in the VCR repair shop. That's right, Mike, and it looks like those exterminators did a pretty good job. Yeah, I think they got rid of all the rats. Yeah, it sure would be a shame if all those rats came back and we had to close the VCR repair shop for good. Forever. Forever. Mm-hmm. Well, hey, speaking of rat feces, do you want to talk more about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Boy, do I ever. Jurassic Park 5, a.k.a. Jurassic World 2, a.k.a. Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom, is finally here! In this fifth Jurassic Park installment, which is a sequel to the soft reboot of Jurassic Park called Jurassic World, Jurassic World 2 Fallen Kingdom is a soft reboot itself of Jurassic Park 2 The Lost World. This film, which was not directed by Colin Trevorrow, reunites us with Bryce Dallas Howard's character, Lady from the Last Movie, and Chris Pratt's character, Owen Thunderguns. In this film, the white cis male, his complicit characterless female love interest, and two comic relief diversity hires go back to the island as Slanublar in order to save some dinosaurs from an exploding volcano. <laughs> Jay, you didn't like Jurassic World Part 5. Tell us why. Or 4. What's Jurassic? Jurassic World is Part 4. And this is Jurassic World Part 4, Part 2. This is Jurassic Park 5. Right. Jurassic World Part 2, Fallen mm, Kingdom. Right. Well, well, going into this, yeah, you went into this having liked the previous one, having no interest in this one. I went into this not liking the previous one and also having no interest in this one. Uh, but this movie is fucking bizarre. The first half of it, it's like, it's like a pretty standard sequel to the last one. And then it's like halfway through the movie, they got bored and just said, ah, let's just start over. And so they just start another movie that's like this weird, like dinosaurs in a, in a mansion story with, it, with like uh, Texas oil moguls with like uh, uh, spindly mustaches uh, bidding in the black market on dinosaurs. And then them running amok in a mansion. It's like a dumb Roger Corman movie with a budget. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you'd think you'd like the second half more because it turns into like like schlock. But I, I like the first half more. Oh, it, I hated the first half. It's exactly a remake of uh, the second one, which is bizarre because people didn't really like the second one. Of, you mean the second one from the original? You're yes, talking about The Lost yes. World. I'm talking yeah. about The Lost World because in The Lost World, the first part was we got to go back to... On a different island. And they got Site B. But you had um, 
uh, uh, Pete Postlewaite, right? Was yeah. he was he the bad guy, like the the great white hunter? Mm -hmm. um, who has now been replaced in this movie by Buffalo Bill? By Buffalo Bill from Silence of the Lambs. Um, and he he was there on also a secret mission to steal dinosaurs, and bring them back to land. So the first half of uh, Jurassic Park Two, The Lost World, is them on the island, and then they get, end up, and then they bring out the T Rex in the cage, like you know King Kong reference, and then the T Rex runs around and ends up at a house. <laughs> he drinks out of the swimming pool, yeah. and then there's a little. I think he eats screaming. a dog, right? Yeah, and he runs down the street and hits his head on a bus, and people are screaming, and uh, it, and it's like, you know, same plot. More except except that was like the last 10 minutes of that movie. This movie, it yeah. really is like right down the middle. It becomes a completely different movie. It's so weird. Um, but I hated the first half. I hated it almost from the beginning. Because right off the bat, uh, we're, we're retrofitting something, which is the, uh, the aquatic dinosaur from the last movie. Do you remember what that was called? Yeah. You're just not going to tell me. A goober fish? It's a goober fish. Um, they make a point of showing it in the first movie. It's in this, this little man-made like lake that they oh, make. It jumps up. Directly right. in the center of the island. Here, it's on the edge of the island that has a fence that opens up directly into the ocean. But yeah, so right off the bat, they just completely changed the location of that pond for plot convenience, which is a big problem I had with the last movie, is how many things happen just because they need to happen so there's a movie. Mm -hmm. So this is a direct continuation of that type of shit. Well, they wanted to steal a piece of bone from the... Uh, the androgynous uh, Rex. And Dominus Rex, yes. The, uh, bad guys want dinosaurs? Uh, that's the, the premise of the movie? Yes. Um, bad guys want dinosaurs. At first, kindly old man, uh, James Cromwell. Not uh, Hammond. J Hammond's best friend slash business partner <laughs> who we've never been told about before. The original Jurassic Park business partner that has never been mentioned before, but yeah. is another old man with a little white beard. So they, 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 they dredge up James Cromwell, put him in a wheelchair and say, you're basically John Hammond. You're the kindly old man with the vision. Of he the, has the cane. And a, 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 he says a line in the, in the movie, he's like, John Hammond never saw dinosaurs as, as a source of money or, or something. He saw them as a beautiful creature that should, should be left alone in the wilderness. And I was like, he made a fucking theme park. <laughs> he was he selling was, lunch boxes. He, he was the entire point of the movie. He was selling like cheap merchandise <laughs> in a gift store. That was the entire point of the first movie was that John Hammond was essentially the villain. Yes, the only one with any clarity, complete clarity was Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Uh, and it's the same in this movie for the two seconds that he's in it. Yeah. He shows up at the very beginning just to say, hey, 25 years ago I said this exact same shit. Leave those things alone. Let nature take its course. I, all I hear in Jeff Goldblum in my head is, can we, can we film this in like an hour? How long is it going to take for that to spread around the globe? And what's going to be done with it? It ain't going to stop with the de-extinction of the dinosaurs. This movie's supremely dumb. Not in a Transformers dumb way. It's it's dumb in like I, I know we often make this reference, uh, but Saturday morning cartoon show mm -hmm. way where I was watching it and I was just I was going like this and wiping over the image and just picturing it as an animated thing like like nineteen oh. eighties like horrible animation. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm watching like like a fun kids show. That's what it felt like, but sure. in an ultra realistic like gloomy dark horror action movie kind of way. And, it was and like, this one looks more like a horror movie. That was the weird thing to me is I, I, I haven't seen the other movies this guy's directed. He did The Orphanage. I never got around to seeing that. And I was watching this movie and I was like, man, this is a good looking movie. Like a lot of oh, it's yeah. really well executed. There's some cool uh, uh, shots and sequences. There's the, when the gyro spear falls in the water, it's just like one long continuous take and it's inside the thing. And it was one of my favorite parts. You see, yeah, it was a cool part. And you see Owen Thunderguns outside trying to break him out of it. Um, similar to the, uh, the car in Children of Men, where it's just, it's right in the center of the car and the camera's going around. So I was like, man, this is a good looking movie. And it's all in service of like the dumbest script possible. It's it like, because a lot of movies that we've seen that are really dumb, they usually have a visual style to match. Like if this looks like the last movie, the Colin Trevorrow one, it would make perfect sense. But this movie looks way too good for what it is. Yeah, it is. It is an unbelievably stupid script, <laughs> um, where it, it is, and and the sad part, it almost feels like like you know you go into battle having known you've lost the war already, because that's <laughs> someone going of, into watching this. Yes, that's yeah. how I felt because it's it's not like this was its opening weekend. It, it has been out. 
for two weeks overseas and has already passed 700 million billion dollar mark yeah. uh, where everyone in the world has seen it and now it's like now we're guaranteed we're guaranteed more uh, I, you know what we'll get into spoilers in a bit but once we get to the ending of this movie I'm like bring it on we're in full stupid mode I, I can't I the, can't the, do the, 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 the Jurassic World the first one yeah. uh, was, was generically stupid which is why I didn't like it this one is generically stupid, and then it goes literally goes off a cliff at one point, and then it is so stupid that I was actually starting to enjoy it. Uh, I'm, I think I'm done with dinosaur movies after this because, it, like Star Wars, it's you've got three elements in it that are there: rebellion, empire, super weapon, and in, and in this you have you know humans, uh, dinosaurs, and military contractors who want to use the dinosaurs as weapons. <laughs> I was going to say, that's the fourth element that you're forgetting, which is that uh, debate about how much we should interfere with nature, yeah. which was solved in the first movie perfectly. That's the entire point of the first movie. And all these sequels are like, well, we got to put that in there because it was in the first movie, even though you can tell that none of the movies give a shit about that. Yeah. They just want to be shitty monster movies. Yeah. Uh, this one included. The first it's one... actually the worst in this one, uh, trying to, to ram that message into it because oh, okay. it makes no sense in this world. No, it, I mean it's it's cartoon comical. Yeah. That ending when uh, uh, what's that what's that little guy's name? Uh, John Hammond's best friend, James Cromwell, super rich guy in a giant mansion. Uh, underneath the giant mansion, there's a secret elevator to uh, an underground Rick Sanchez lair of super technological stuff under the house, right? Which is, yeah, large enough for not only a giant genetics lab, but also cages for dinosaurs. Which, which I guess James Cromwell never heard roar. They must have some really good soundproofing <laughs> uh, in between the... the yeah, he's oblivious to all this until the scene where he's not, and it's never explained. Yeah, he somehow is aware of it, but we'll get into that in a minute. <laughs> but uh, his, his, the man he's chosen to he, entrust his wealth with and what, what he does with you know, all of his money uh, is, a, is like a you know, corporate white guy who used to be idealistic, but now has just sold out. He wants the money. Yeah. He doesn't care. They're gonna go steal a bunch of dinosaurs, auction them off to uh, billionaires, uh, foreign countries, arms dealers. Whoever's paying the most. But at the same time, they're also creating a new super hybrid dinosaur with uh, B.D. Wong, who is the actor that was in the original Jurassic Park and then As World. just a scientist. Yeah. He's slightly bad in the last one, now he's working for the bad guys. He's just getting worse, so he's like, I'm gonna make a hybrid of a of a velociraptor and something else. It's the same shit as the last one. We have a genetically altered dinosaur it's again. It's a little bigger than a, a velociraptor, but it ha it's more intelligent or somehow. And then, and then they're just like, oh, well, we're auctioning things off. Let's put it out on the auction block just to show them. We're not going to auction it off, but we're just going to put it out there for no reason. They have no like solid concrete plan. Yeah. And, and then I people start bidding on it. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, this like, is going. Money. And they, they show them like in, in a, like a cartoony shot, they're like hundreds of millions of dollars. <laughs> it's just like a, like a ticker, like a spreadsheet that's just like constantly adding up money. It's so dumb. So bad guys have nebulous plans of just generally exploiting dinosaurs. When I saw Buffalo Bill, AKA Ted Levine, mm -hmm. uh, I thought uh, he's very similar to the, the P. Postlewaite character from the second one. Kind of like the character from Avatar, you know, the, like, the, you know, I'm gonna- it's a stock character. Stock character, soldier guy who's out for a paycheck. Right. And so I thought, okay, well, they're gonna do something where the US military wants dinosaurs and is gonna examine them and try to create, but really it's much more vague than that. It's just, eh, who wants some dinosaur parts? <laughs> so, so, oh, this biotech company wants the dinosaurs to maybe like make drugs with. The Russians want them to make weapons. We're still trying to do that weaponize the dinosaurs thing. Yeah, and then, and then they prove, they're like, hey, we, we got this, this super dinosaur called Velociraptor hybrid dinosaur. You use a laser pointer to tell it where to go and hit this sonic frequency and it'll just attack without, without stopping, yeah. right? So then someone takes a gun and aims at some got random guy in the, off, uh, in the audience. Has a laser <laughs> at pointer. At the auction. At, yeah, on the gun 
and hits the sonic button, right? If you have a gun with a laser pointer on it <laughs> that you're aiming at your target, why do you need then a dinosaur to run at your target? It's a lot easier to control than a dinosaur. In fact, most weapons are easier to control than a dinosaur. That's the thing they mentioned that they have like an offhand line in this about how like, oh, people have used animals in combat throughout the years. And they reference like shit that existed before we had like modern day tanks. Yes, yes. And, like what was it, they had the diseased rats? Yeah, it's World like, War II, they used diseased rats. Which is like, well, but those are diseased. They're mindless rats. Now that snake has been infected by deadly toxins from cancer infested rats. That's not the same thing as what you're talking about. You rode on a horse, uh, <laughs> you rode on an elephant. Like, it's a big beast for transportation. Yeah. The Get justification it. for it is so thin. It, it, it is, because uh, you could have gone a different route and said, well, okay, we, we took uh, an unconscious uh, uh, velociraptor and we put this microchip in its brain, mm -hmm. right? And then it runs around and, it, and we control it with a keyboard. Like, that's, it's so nebulous and so vague. Or, or you have a character like the Joker that just wants to create chaos and he, he's hired people to collect these dinosaurs so he can just unleash them on the world just to fuck everything up. Yeah, it's something like weird like that. Either way, the dinosaurs are always at the bottom of the list of, <laughs> of a dumber plot. You know me. What I want to talk about Indo-Rex, indo Indominus Rex? No. Oh, that's the other one again. An Indoraptor. God damn it, I want to talk about Indoraptor, right? Okay. They, they say, Indoraptor is the most intelligent thing ever. It, it, it focuses on its prey and it's super smart and blah, 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 blah. The movie didn't even know what it was doing with its own creation because you have Indoraptor and finally Indoraptor is let out. It does one clever thing, which I liked, um, when Buffalo Bill goes in its cage oh, and he yeah. shoots him with, with tranquilizers and then Indoraptor falls over and Buffalo Bill wants to pull his tooth out. And Indoraptor was smart enough to kind of pretend to pass out. And he winked at the audience to let us know. There's that shot where he's in the foreground. He literally looks at the camera and smiles. He opens one eye. He opens one eye and smiles at the camera. I mean, you know, it's was, silly, but... I was shocked. It was smart. It was smart that Indoraptor, like, was, was intelligent enough to set a trap, basically, and pretend yeah. to be passed out, because he knew what those darts did. Um, Clever girl. Yes. Clever girl. The Indoraptor is just like savagely running through things to get at every all of our characters. Mm -hmm. uh, Owen Thunder Guns, Lady, and Little Girl. And we'll get into Little Girl later. We'll get into Little Girl. But just um, like uh, just like the last movie, we have a scene where there's chaos and people running everywhere, and then everybody's just gone except our main characters for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Just like the last one. But then two scenes back to back almost uh, with Indoraptor. Uh, completely contradict each other because the little girl's running and she's running for the staircase and Indoraptor is trying to get her. And there's a little uh, thing with a dinosaur skeleton on it. And the little girl runs past it. And Indoraptor just barrels through it like a, like a crazed wild animal. Yes. I don't know if you're ever running after somebody and there's a thing in your way, you just go like this and go around it. Basic intelligence. Even a dumb animal would know not to just smash their way through it. Then the next scene, the little girl's hiding in her bed, an Indoraptor comes down outside the window, gingerly opens the door <laughs> handle with his fingernail, and comes into the room. It's very like quiet and yes. yeah. So what is it? A bloodthirsty, <laughs> out of control, mindless, wild animal, or a super intelligent creature. Like if Endoraptor was moving with precision and grace and like, like a ninja almost, without smashing anything, uh, then it would have been an interesting take. Like yeah. they upped its intelligence to a point where it doesn't like smash its head through things. Yeah. It, it, it operates completely differently. And you're just like, oh, oh that's kind of scary. That's weird. Well, yeah. especially by this point in the movie, we've watched two hours of dinosaurs running through things and smashing everything. It's just more of the same shit. Good enough. So, uh, what are you dating like an accountant now? Or? Owen. Ventriloquist? Stop it. You love a dummy. Well, I want to talk about Chris Pratt's character real quick. Okay. Because we don't have a relatable, likable protagonist in this film. We have cartoon characters. Uh, and, and specifically, I wanted to mention his introduction. Because it was very unmovie-like, and it was very annoying. <laughs> uh, Bry Bryce Dallas Howard is approached by Billionaire Man. 
and said, I want you to go and rescue all these dinosaurs, which is what she's apparently trying to do in her free time or as a new job. She's an activist. She has a whole office full of people that are trying to save those dinosaurs that have killed hundreds of people through several films now. <laughs> They just won't fucking learn. Nobody will learn. No. There's a brief moment during that sequence where she's in her office with all the activists and they're all like, you know, young kids. And I, I was hoping it would go, the movie would turn into like uh, the Green Inferno, the Eli Roth movie, where all these like smug, self-righteous uh, activists go into the jungle to try and preserve it and then just get, get eaten by cannibals. <laughs> I was like, it'd be great if they were all like, we have to save these dinosaurs, and then they just get eaten. There's a scene where a hundred dinosaurs come out and just tear them all apart. Yeah, yeah. I You're mean, so wrong! That's kind of what happens throughout all these movies, really. We need to preserve these dinosaurs. And then one second later, Bryce Dallas Howard is running for her life and terrified of the dinosaurs. Yes, yes. But anyway, you're talking about the introduction of Chris Pratt. Yeah, I, I made a joke during the film when her and, uh, her and Franklin... Um, the, the technician, the hacker kid. That kid. Uh, he was fine. Uh, where they're, they're, they're escaping a dinosaur and she closes the door so it can get burned alive by lava. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, I thought you came there to save them. <laughs> Just make friendly dinosaurs. Just make herbivores with your computers and your DNA. Yeah. Don't or just don't make dinosaurs at all. Uh, but but uh, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, a.k.a. Lady. Claire? Claire. Oh, oh, oh. She actually kind of had a character in the last movie. There wasn't much of a payoff, but no. she kind of did. She had an arc. She went from uptight corporate lady to I'm adventurous now. Because Chris Pratt mansplained her the whole <laughs> film. <laughs> they really toned that down in this one. Yeah. Well, I think they got a little bit of a backlash for it in the last movie. So. They did, yeah. so they're like, let's not take any chances. Let's just let Chris Pratt be Chris Pratt. And we won't let Bryce, Bryce Dallas Howard do anything. Right. She's just lady. Yeah. But anyway, so a rich guy tells Claire, you can go back to the island. I'm going to give you a bunch of money. We really want to try to get blue. Uh, do you know anybody, you know, who, who could help with that? And she's like, oh, sure. There's one guy I think could help, but it might take some convincing. Hard cut to Owen. Washing dishes in a greasy spoon diner while he's getting yelled at by his boss. You're saying this is what should have happened because this isn't what happened. That's what happens in movies. <laughs> uh, your lead character, your protagonist, is has some challenges. Instead, it cuts to him like an almost what it should be the end of the film. Mm. I'm building my house. Yeah, everything's perfect. Life is great. Uh, and, uh, why, what is, why is he even going back? What's the risk? What's the reward? Well, the, the, Nothing. his whole change happens in the following scene when they go to a bar and she says, you should come with. And he says, nah. And she says, okay. And then she leaves. And then he goes, eh. And then he just goes with. That was his change. <laughs> it, 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 but he had no character. I no. know that's all, that's all stock writing. Um, and I, and I well, but it's something. That, but it's something. Yeah, this has nothing. It's just I'm building my house, I'm living the dream. Oh, I guess okay, I'll come with. Yeah. And then now I'm back. Well, also the two of them have the exact same arc as the last movie, which is uh, they used to be romantically involved. They're not anymore. And then at the end, uh, they kiss. He shows very little uh, like aggressive romantic interest, like he did in the other one. But then they then they they get back they get back at at the male patriarchy a little bit earlier on, when the the veterinarian character. Oh yeah, the one who's an expert on being a dinosaur vet, even though she's never seen a dinosaur. Yes. Yeah. Um, she she's like, don't talk down to me. I'm a strong, independent woman, and don't don't belittle me. Come on, uh, beefcake. <laughs> So, I don't even remember this. Yes, um, she yells at Ted Levine for for talking down to her as a lady, thinking she can't hold her own in a world filled with violent dinosaurs. This is a man who's in the military with machine guns, and she's a vet who's never seen a dinosaur. <laughs> so his assumption wasn't quite sexist. Uh, more, so much as logical. More logical and out of concern, but she takes it as sexist. and says, yeah. don't talk to me that way. I'm just the same as you. We're all equals. I'm just a lady, and I can hold my own. And then she calls Chris Pratt a beefcake. 
uh, that dehumanizing him and calling him just a big pile of dumb man meat. It's a commentary on something. Something was going on. Either the writer was clueless and stupid, or they were making a comment based on the previous film's accusations of misogyny. It could be a little bit of both, because I know there was kind of like a meta quality of the last movie with like the, the uh, guy in the control room. That first park was legit. You know, I have a lot of respect for it. They didn't need these genetic hybrids. They just needed dinosaurs, real dinosaurs. That's okay. kind of a um, and so I think there's a little bit of that in this. Like also when Bryce Dallas Howard gets off the plane onto the island, there's like a close up of her foot yeah. and it's like a boot. Yeah. It's like, look, she's not wearing high heels through the whole movie because everybody complained about that in the last one. Oh, she's like running away from the T-Rex in high heels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I thought it was so. so these filmmakers, that Colin Trevorrow, he's very meta and he's very clever. He's very clever. <laughs> he's, he's a very, very smart man. <laughs> I mean, have you seen Book of Henry? He could write a really good screenplay that's so smart. You know, you might, it might just be too quick for you. Yeah. You might just be like, I'm just getting tangled up in this plot. I cannot follow what's happening. Do you remember when the film ran out of story? <laughs> a after, after the auction scene, when they're like, it ran out of story. Dinosaur chased them. <laughs> Dinosaur chased them upstairs. Well, no, that's when they introduced- Go on roof. It was so stupid, uh, which leads us into the little girl. Let's talk about the little girl. Yes, um, I think I, I audibly gasped in the theater because they intro the little girl as uh, she's not Hammond's granddaughter, they say. Yeah, she's not, no, 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 well, not Hammond. That's, his character is not Hammond. We call, we, we, we'll call him Zephyrin Cochran. Okay. Excuse me. Uh, but yeah, um, you wanna tell the story? We'll, we'll say spoilers, I mean. I well, don't they, know. they try and, yeah, we're spoilers, it doesn't matter. This is after they ran out of story too. They're like, what's something we can do as a twist? Uh, she is a clone. James Cromwell cloned his daughter, and that's his daughter. So we have introduced that human cloning is now a reality. Yes, and then it's never mentioned again. Well, I was, I was just assuming that was, setting, uh, that was following the tradition of uh, the last movie of kind of setting things up and having no payoff for them. Possibly. Like the kids in the last one is like, I'm sad because their parents are getting divorced. Never mentioned again, no payoff to that. That Colin Trevorrow, <laughs> master He's sub writing. subverting your expectations by making you think you're gonna watch a complete film. We hope that people come out with their imaginations expanded of what a Jurassic Park movie can be. But anyway, uh, then yeah, uh, we get to the very end. The bad guys have been, well, I guess we haven't seen what happens to them yet, but they're out of the mansion. Yeah, all those thousands of people just kind of disappear. I, did they all just run into the woods? No, and nobody called the police. I mean, I guess you, if you're going to an illegal monster auction, <laughs> you, you don't call the police. You just, you just run back to somewhere. Mm -hmm. So dinosaurs are in the basement of the mansion in cages. The, the kerfuffle with Blue and security guards and our two characters uh, caused toxic gas to leak out. Not the explosion gas, no, a different another gas. gas. Uh, it has leaked out and is filling up the basement. Where all the dinosaurs the are. The dinosaurs are gonna suffocate or, or get poisoned by the gas. And so uh, Bryce Dallas Howard uh, opens up all the cages for some reason, individually. Yeah. This is where things get confusing. Cause she's like, I'm gonna open up all the cages. And well, Yeah, if you what? think, you see her like yeah. open, 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 and you assume that's like her letting them out, but then there's a big door that she also has yes. to open. Yes, and, and Owen is like, okay, you go, go ahead and open up all the cages. Like he's not quite sure, yeah. but he gives her the go ahead. And then she opens up all the cages and they're all there. And then there's one big like- It's a big red button. It's a Wonka Vader button. <laughs> and, uh, this one. There it goes. And she says, no, gotta let the dinosaurs die. And I'm like, oh good, okay. Yeah. That's a quality ending. Cause this, well, this isn't even a case of like, where the dinosaurs are on their own island. We should leave that island and just let them be. This is in the US. Yes, don't let them out into the world because it's, it's you know, you can't, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Yeah. And then the little girl hits the button. <laughs> And opens the it's door. almost comedy timing. Yeah. Almost. 
And then she says, They look back and she yeah. hit the button. She says, I let them out because they're just like me. They're, they're, they're alive, just like me, or they're, something yeah, like they're that. Because she realized she was a clone. Cause yeah, she only exists because of uh, tinkering with science, and they only exist because of tinkering with science, but she's not going to, to uh, just devour people. Well, right, and as a four-year-old, she <laughs> understands that because Mr. Mills yelled it at them in expository dialogue for absolutely no reason. Yeah. You're going to protect her? Do you even know what she is? Five years ago, <laughs> James Cromwell decided to make a clone of his daughter because he missed his daughter. And that clone turned out to be her. I've got to go now. Why is he saying that at that moment? And and she understood the gravity of all that as a four-year-old. Yeah, yeah. So the dinosaurs are out. Uh, This was shocking to me. It was so stupid that this happens. We see, this is shot in the trailer where you see the, the, uh, whatever the underwater one is. And it's like there's surfers and it's coming up towards them. Uh, and then we just see dinosaurs taking over. Well, we have a, we have some uh, like dialogue overlaid with Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum came back for so five we're, seconds. We now live in a world that's uh, where we have to deal with uh, everyday dinosaurs. Everywhere. I guess yeah, everyone's just accepted it. Not not we need to make a plan to take care of this. They're like ah, I guess we're all just gonna die. The ending really should have been Mills. I mean, this is also stupid, but this makes sense. Mills <laughs> Mills has been attacked by dinosaurs and he's all scraped up, right? Mm-hmm. For no reason, he, he crawls into the room, and when they're not looking, he hits the button as his last thing. Yeah. As a fuck you and as a bad guy. Mm-hmm. The fact that a little girl did it uh, is incredibly stupid <laughs> and uh, doesn't make any sense. So, Mike, would you recommend Jurassic World's Fallen Kingdom? And Jay, I assume you're, you're a non-recommendation. Uh, no, it's it's just terrible. The second half was terrible enough that I actually enjoyed it. Uh, the whole dinosaurs in a mansion in the black market auction was just so bizarre to me. And then the clone, like, it's all so weird, but it's only like the second half of the movie and the first half is just terrible, just like generically terrible. Maybe show up halfway through. Go, so, go an hour into the movie. Once they get to that, that mansion, then just just watch it. See, my, my suggestion was to leave after the hamster ball part. Okay, well, I guess we're just on, on opposite ends of which part is the most amusingly terrible. Yes, yes. What are you doing? Writing the script to the next Jurassic World movie. Da 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 da. Jurassic Park. 